Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar by Homeopathic Science Congress Society in collaboration with uh, Sukul Institute, uh, Sukul Institute of Homeopathic Research and Homeopathy 360. So hi, here I. Here I welcome you to the uh, webinar day two of this take, uh, webinar series on taking medicine into the space. That's an international webinar organized on advancement in homeopathy on the occasion of the death anniversary of Dr. B. Sahani, sir. So we are uh, through this webinar uh, series, we, we, uh, we want to pay homage to Dr. B. Sahani, sir. Uh, who was a great homeopath and an inspiration for uh, uh, the homeopathic fraternity and has done a lot for this fraternity which which uh, which cannot be uh, talked in words but yes we have organized uh, this series in the memory of his uh, uh, his uh, uh, his contribution to the field of homeopathy so uh, i welcome you to the, uh, to join this journey uh, of extending ho extending homeopathy to achieve the target of ultimate medicine so we are targeting uh, uh, through this webinar this is what we are targeting and uh, i would like to welcome all the delegates as well as all our dignitaries and speakers of today and i want to th present my thanks to mr manish jain the director of vijan publishers for giving us this platform to organize this webinar series and we are glad uh, that uh, we we uh, we could be a part the homeopathy 360 who could be the part of this webinar series through uh, with the homeopathic science congress society and we are very much thankful to dr mk sahani sir uh, um, uh, he I, I i can say uh, only one thing about him that he is uh, he, I have never met a person like him in my uh, throughout my life, and especially in homeopathic fraternity, such a kind person, such a down to earth person, and always there for, for everyone. He never says no to anybody. So he, uh, I've never met such a person who has such a yielding disposition. So uh, we are grateful to him as well as his whole team for organizing things this webinar series. And we are also thankful to talk uh, one of the speakers of the day as well as the uh, the organizer, one of the organizers of this uh, uh, webinar series, Sukul Institute of Homeopathic Research. And uh, I think uh, Dr. Sahani would be welcoming him and we uh, 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 I, I think he can only introduce him better. So I am thankful to Dr. Sukul sir also and everybody who have joined us, our chairpersons and co-chairpersons. So, without wasting any more time, I just want to give a brief introduction about Homeopathy 360 and uh, There was a technical issue, sir. Uh, so I just want to request everybody to please uh, visit the website of Homeopathy 360 www.homeopathy360.com. And if you want to get your uh, get your articles or research papers published, you can mail the same to us, and we'll be happy to help uh, you as well as promote your uh, promote research papers and everything on our website uh, to take homeopathy to another level. So now I welcome Dr. M.K. Sahani, sir, who needs no introduction and uh, he's one of the organizers of this webinar series and inspiration uh, for all the homeopaths and also he has worked under Dr. B. Sahani, sir, who, in whose memory we are organizing this webinar series, a recognized scientist and discoverer of transmission of tra medicine energy from a distance. As you all know, he is an achiever of so many paper, uh, so many awards, and uh, he has presented a lot of papers uh, internationally and nationally, and also got his articles and pap pap papers published in international, national peer-reviewed journals, and is also one of the author of Principles of Practice of Homeopathic Pharmacy book and many other publications. So here I welcome, and I want to hand over the session to him, sir. Over to you. Please proceed with the session further. Ah, thank you, Yashika, for your nice introductions and uh, uh, starting this uh, session now. 
So uh, today is the second day, and uh, uh, we are organizing this international webinar in memory of uh, late Dr. B. Sahani, who devoted his life for the cause of the homeopathy by discovering, and he, we are remembering every year uh, on his death anniversary and the birth anniversary both. This year we are very um, lucky that uh, we are having a bigger platform and big associations have joined Sukul Institute of Homeopathic Research, Homeopathy 360, BJAN. So a big group is coming up and uniting to spread the message of learning. What I feel, uh, Dr. Sahani always wanted that it, learning is the only things that we can have uh, and that is only achievements for the life. So learning and serving is a joint phenomena that has that needs to be practiced throughout our life. So with this approach, this Homeopathic Science Congress Society was formed and we have dedicated uh, to it and we want to propagate the message throughout the world. So with these introductions, I would like to, uh, today we have very great speakers as well as our chairpersons and co-chairpersons. I welcome Dr. Chairman Sir, the Principal of Stein Ram Homeopathic Medical College. I welcome Dr. Jitendra Kumar Singh, uh, the Principal at Kent Homeopathic Medical College. He is also the son of late Mahadev uh, Prasad, who was a leading practitioner in the district of Vaisali in Bihar. And I welcome Ma'am Ma Marion Kellner from Germany, who has very kindly consented and very politely, she was, every time I saw her face, I feel that she, she is just a devoted lady working for the cause of humanity. And then young fellow, Dr. Aridwan, is the son of N.G. Sukul, the great warrior and great researcher from the Pisho Bharti University in West Bengal. And they have established that they have worked for the cause of the homeopathy. The learning is the only, only and research is the only approach for their life. So with these things, I just, uh, uh, we will start the sessions and uh, uh, let me introduce our uh, chairpersons, Dr. Chairman sir, uh, who is a uh, well-known doctor and practitioner. And as I just told you that he is the principal at uh, Sairam Homeopathic Medical College, uh, a group of institutions, big institutions. If you go to the Sairam Institute, you will feel that uh, system, how the education is getting on. Uh, and then he is uh, also the recipient of the Best Teacher Award. Recently, he was awarded the Best Principal Award by the Mahendra Singh Memorial Award, very recently. And then wonderful things that he is carrying on is uh, he has published a uh, e-books on the organ and of medicines which is linked with the YouTube which is very wonderful contributions where the students are enjoying these things and uh, uh, I Dr. Chairman sir I will request you to kindly make your uh, uh, president uh, chairman remarks on this occasion Dr. Chairman sir you are You are able to listen to me, Chairman, sir? Thank you. Sir, please on your audio, Dr. Chairman, sir. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Please on your audio. Yes, sir. Yeah. Please uh, continue. Yes, sir. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I am Dr. S. B. Sairaman, working as a principal in Sri Sairam with Medical College, Chennai. It is a warm welcome to one and all gathering here. So, in this occasion, first, I am very much thankful to our Dr. Sagani, sir, it is a known world famous in homeopathy vision. So, for inviting me as a chairperson for this occasion. So, you already know about the today topic is the internet. There is a today topics are many. The uh, what is called the what is the topic itself explained or the heading itself explained the taking medicine into the space. So what Hanuman has the dreamed about the term that they come into the seminar because we already discussed about the dynamic one. So till now it is not possible to uh, prove. We can say in the philosophy that uh, they mentioned about the Avogadra number and other things. But till now that is not able to prove 
otherwise till now there is no specific any investigation material is for that okay so this is the very good topic that is the heading is there so i am very much thankful to the function organized by the homeopathic science congress society and sukul institute of homeopathic research in Kola, in research so uh, thank you very much sir and also i am very much warm welcome to that marian man the topic is the homeopathic treatment of traumatic woman and anirban sukul sir the phd sir topic is biological effects of ultra low doses known remedies and dr sanjeev kumar singh sir topic is the contribution of dr p sagani sir and also i am very warm welcome to co chairman dr jitendra kumar sir and my our moderator dr pega ma'am actually we already know about the sagani sir and his father is a well known oil physician and also we usually told uh, in in our place we usually told this type of legend or this type of persons are not buried because they are only seeded yeah buried means it is the entire the chapter is closed but it is only seeded so there are many observings are always arise due to that only so friends i just i warm welcome to one and all especially the homeopathy and jain group for arranging this webinar thank you thank you very much sir thank you dr chiravan you are always so pleasing uh, to us every time ready ready to support homeopathy now our co chairman is dr jitendra kumar he is a principal at kent uh, homeopathic medical college a leading institution in the district of the uh, in the bihar state and uh, he is uh, uh, working for the cause of the homeopathy and he is also a best propagator and recently he was also awarded as the best organizer award by the mahendra singh memorial uh, lecture me, 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 trust uh, dr jitendra uh, uh, kumar is also the vice uh, uh, president at the homeopathic medical association of india and he is very young and every time uh, sensitive to support other and every time he is willing to uh, propagate he is also running a very good kent homeopathic laboratory where good homeopathic medicines are manufactured and distributed he is a educationist and he is also pharmaceutical researcher uh, uh, from the state of the bihar i welcome you sir and i request you to make a, your a small brief message on this occasion uh, please put on your mic sir you you are not audible please aap apna you you can put on your mic your audio is not audio is off you put on your audio no, sir center of the screen mein dekhiye upar aap option aa raha hai upar upar mein aur upar option center of the screen yeah okay yes sir thank you ah so okay okay uh, good afternoon everyone sir uh, respected our learned physician of homeopathy dr m k sani sir chairperson dr chera manman sir or moderator dr mrs megha megha ji and also respected dr marion kela germany dr arin ban sukul ji and dr sanjeev kumar singh sir i am very glad to enjoying that we have to join this webinar to the bless of dr p sani and great bless to dr p sani sir so on this occasion i am thankful to the homeopathic science congress society for inviting me to the part of webinar organized on the occasion of best university anniversary to lend the homeopathic former our state bihar dr b sani had shown a new path to the healing system of medicine and remind the uh, sensitivity which is essential factor for practicing medicine dr b sahani contribution will be providing guidelines for every to those who which is serve the community a man is born to serve the great message that we received from dr b sahani in present teaching of dr b sahani is becoming more relevant in the background of remote sense sensing property being utilized in every walk of life homeopathic education need to incorporate the teaching of serving humanity as the basic subject of in curriculum 
सो आई एप्रिशिएट द कंट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ होम्योपैथिक साइंस कांग्रेस सोसाइटी फॉर स्प्रीडिंग द मैसेज फॉर लर्निंग एंड सर्विंग बाय ऑर्गेनाइजिंग सच वेबिनार कंट्रीब्यूशन इवन अंडर द मोस्ट डिफिकल्ट टाइम क्रिएटेड बाय द पेंडेमिक कोविड 19 effort of the homeopathic 360 and super institute of homeopathy is such an appreciate in joining hand to make the more appreciate as possible a team spirit is observed in this joint organization of the homeopathic science congress society and homeopathic city and super institute of homeopathy with with these words i pray my tribute to great soul of dr b sahni and appeal all the follow the path led by him especially i want to say that a person who has born in this earth named dr b sahni he had adventure so he has start a new path to treat the patient by homeopathic medicine through the hair transmission it is great research and i pray to god in in coming times i pray to god this system will enhance and all there are so many homeopathic practitioners i have to see him, i have to meet him and uh, or he is very successful to treat the patient so uh, that is um, now i again say thank you very much for this seminar and for the success of this webinar thank you sir okay sir aapko audio off hai sir sir audio off hai sani sir thoda thank you dr jitendra ji uh, for your nice uh, message and introduction to for the seminar now we are going to start our uh, webinar scientific session and our first speaker is uh mr uh, marion kelner from the germany and uh, i'm just uh, delighted to uh, move her biodata by going through the her website and the informations that i have gathered marion kelner has been working as a psychotherapist since 2005 initially part of the uh, her work was the social bit of in the anti violence area he helped many people to free themselves from hopeless situations and to build a new life for themselves he grew up in the berlin and then uh, living there only training in just start therapy from start institute approval to practice medicine according to the uh, limited field of the psychotherapy her work is the as a psychotherapist and she has a training in classical homeopathy at the international school of classical homeopathy in belgium she also got training in the classical homeopathy uh, from the campus literally berlin uh, and then also from faruk master from mumbai in india she had done had two two year post graduate course for homeopath on constitutional prescribing by subrata banerji Ellen's College of Homeopathy in England, and further tra training series with the uh, hypoanalytical part work with trauma associated disorder at Jap Center for Applied Psycho Traumatology in Vienna. Uh, Alison Miller treat mind con mind control and ritual violence effectively and effectively at the Villa in Stuttgart. further training she got uh, with the diagnosis of treatment of chronic trauma related dissociated of the personality at, at the hamber so, so much working for the cause of the disability and for the cause of the distressed people and helping right from from her core of her heart so madam i welcome you in this uh, webinar series and i request you to start your presentations on your topic today over to dr marion kalner ma'am thank you very much for your invitation to the uh, seminar uh, and that i can uh, present uh, my paper here um, because uh, the situation 
for the people who are traumatized, uh, um, it's my life theme, you can say. <laughs> Uh, it's my really favorite uh, team to work with and I uh, got so many good results uh, or awesome results to combine psychotherapy with the classical homeopathy. So um, this is really like a wonder for me. So I like uh, to share the, the things. Uh, Okay. Can you see the slides? Yes, ma'am. It's it's uh, visible. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, before I going uh, into the subject of homeopathic treatment, uh, I would like uh, to start with an overview about the. Um, violence against women because uh, I mostly uh, work with women who had sexual trauma like a rape or any other uh, kind of uh, violence. Um, according to the World Health Organization, uh, WHO, around the world, third, uh, one third of all women experience physical or sexual violence. And the WHO emphasizes that not only women in developing countries or in poor social classes uh, are affected, like most of the people are thinking, <laughs> uh, but also economically independent women or even uh, old women where you never expect that they really experience some um, sexual violence. Uh, the biggest uh, European study about violence against women uh, conducted from the European Union Agency for Fundamental Rights uh, shows that one of three women experienced physical or sexual violence since the age of 15. These are 62 millions of women living only in the European countries, also, or even not all the European countries, only in the countries of the, of the European Union. 62 millions. Yeah? So you can imagine how it is in all over the world. One of five women have been stalked from ex-partners or other men. And every second woman made the experience, uh, experience of being molested. The German Federal Ministry of uh, Family, Sen Senior Citizens, Women and Youth conducted 2004 a representative study about violence against women with the following results. 40% of the women in Germany experienced physical and or sexual violence since the age of 16. This is nearly half of all women in Germany. 25% of the women in Germany experienced domestic violence from their partners or ex-partners. 13% of the women in Germany experienced a prosecutely relevant kind of sexual violence. This is actually a very uh, less um, uh, number and uh, this uh, is related to the law in Germany because the law was very, very uh, strict, uh, only a rape uh, where uh, additional um, violence was being used um, was uh, rape you can uh, get uh, to the court, bring to the court. So this was, uh, that's why the number is <clears throat> very less, it's only 13%, but uh, there was a change in law uh, in 2017 and I think now uh, it will be um, much higher the number, yeah. And 42% of the women experienced a psychological violent, violence like intimidation, defamation, threats, 
psychological blackmail, etc. And we know that uh, actually the psychological violence even led uh, more wounds than uh, the physical one. Because the injuries of the physical violence, they disappear after some time, normally. And uh, what stays for a lifetime uh, are the psychological effects of the violence. According to her personality, every woman can react different uh, after a rape. Most of the women feel fear or a feeling of helplessness indignity or a feeling of being contaminated or under shock. The trust in herself and in the world is distressed. The belief in the feeling of being secure is impaired. So most of the survivors feeling ashamed and guilty. Some women, uh, women react as if nothing has happened a very important safety mechanism of the psych to overcome this shock. And people often think, oh, when she is reacting as nothing has happened, then it can't be uh, so um, difficult for her. But this is uh, not true. So you need to know about the um, effects of psychological um, trauma to understand this reaction. The traumatic effects of a rape are similar to those after a kidnapping or a natural catastrophe. Directly after a rape, most of the women are in a state of shock and they seem to be disorientated and incap incapable of action. The apperception can be restricted as well as the capability of concentration and the general functionality can be reduced. Others look very calm, nearly untouched or over controlled. All of these are defense mechanism of the psyche. Same may be irritated, angry or aggressive or anxious or in dis despair. A lot of women withdraw from others and want to be alone. And even for maybe a very long time over years or months. Besides hyperarousal, nervousness, feeling frightened, irritability, fear and emotional numbness are intrusions which are frequent re-experiencing of the trauma in form of flashbacks and avoidance, typical effects of a traumatization. All effects of extremely stressing trauma experiences are normal reaction to abnormal events. Nevertheless, a lot of raped women have the feeling of going mad due to the strong post-traumatic symptoms. The long-term effects of uh, sexual violence are the following. An impaired self-confidence and an instable sense of identity. Uh, chronic feelings of shame and uh, guilty feelings. A lot of different fears. Depression and sometimes suicidality. Dissociative disorders uh, and dissociation of feelings. Psychosomatic uh, symptoms, uh, a negative relation to their own body, uh, a lot of self-injuries uh, to get uh, rid of this uh, pressure, addictions uh, that can be alcohol or pills um, <clears throat> or even drugs, uh, problems in living uh, sexual relationship uh, and also in general relationship uh, problems. Uh, which I already mentioned is a social withdrawal or even isolations because they don't trust anybody anymore. An inim inimical mistrusting approach to the world and uh, most of other people or um, sometimes maybe to all people. A chronic feeling of emptiness and helplessness and economical problems because a lot of women can't uh, go to work anymore 
because of uh, these very severe post-traumatic symptoms. Or maybe they have to change the home because they don't feel <clears throat> comfortable anymore when the rape was taking place in the home. Or they have to pay a lot of therapy costs to heal from the post-traumatic uh, symptoms. Um, now I will um, come to the homeopathic treatment uh, of effects of uh, acute trauma. So uh, when the trauma just take place uh, now or in the last weeks, then you can first see in the acute phase of a shock, there is a disorientation and reduction of attention. And any um, an additional stim stimulus can't be digested. The affected person is uh, restlessness or maybe also like, uh, also like frozen inside. And very typical is also the so-called uh, speechless terror, the incapability to talk about the traumatic experience. Besides this, there is an excessive veg vegetative reaction with tachycardia, sweating, a red or pale face or no stare. A lot of people experience changing of moods and a rapid change between grief, anger or, uh, and apathy and withdrawal from their social environment. Later, the post-traumatic uh, processing of the stress leads to intrusions like flashbacks or nightmares which are accompanied from emotional reactions and fear. Uh, the affected persons show a general hyperarousal with inner tension and a hyperattention for external stimuli. Feeling of being frightened, irritability, sleeping disorders. Further, there can be a fear of persons, places, things or situation which remind on the traumatic experience. For this reason, these triggers are mostly avoided. And women with an acute traumatic reaction need mostly aconite in order to come in balance again and to digest the traumatic experience. Aconite helps good against the panic and the nightmares. Women who feel themselves like frozen inside and who are ap apathetic Apath apathic and withdraw from social life responds very good to opium. They show the symptoms of a hypoarousal and physical anesthesia. So <clears throat> Econite is uh, one of the, yeah, I would say most uh, important remedy for acute trauma. There are others too you can use, but aconite would be the first choice when the symptoms are matching. Uh, stormy influences from outside as a causal factor. Then tension on a mental, emotional and physical plane. Effects of terror, shock and anger. Extreme trauma tra with strong restlessness which is not better by changing the position. Agonizing fear of death, phobias after shock, anxiety states, sleeplessness with anxiety and restlessness, nightmares with disp uh, dyspnea. Symptoms of aconite match the symptoms of the traumatic uh, hyperarousal the best. Opium is the best uh, choice for the hypoarousal states of uh, traumatic uh, stress, uh, which is uh, emotional numbness after a traumatic experience, dissociation as a psychological protective mechanism of the psyche, and the pain is not felt in order to survive. In acute trauma, when there are symptoms of avoidance, hypoarousal and intrusions. Effects of terror, fear, anger and shame. And sweat is a uh, concomitant very often. Fearfulness and nervousness 
a lot of dreams and fantasies, uh, even in daytime, but also terrifying fantasies, insensitiveness, numbness and ap apathy, withdrawal, aversion to company and other people. The sensation of a wall between themselves and others, avoidance of feelings and memories, and memories which comes up in nightmares, irritability and changing of moods. But of course, uh, it is uh, more <laughs> effective. This you know uh, very <laughs> better than me, I think. Uh, if you can find a constitutional remedy, uh, <clears throat> especially when it has come chronical. So women with a post-traumatic stress disorder mostly, mostly come with different emotional, mental and physical symptoms to the homeopathic treatment. And in this condition, we have to find the right constitutional remedy in order to heal this, these women. Below, I introduced two cases of sexual traumatized women uh, who get, got very much relief uh, from their um, post-traumatic uh, stress disorder by the homeopathic treatment. So one is the case of a 20 year old, years old uh, student and the case taking, case, case taking was in January 2015. In her childhood, she was sexually abused from her father for several years. And additionally, in 2014, she was raped. So she developed a post-traumatic dis stress disorder with the typical symptoms. And uh, since the age of 18, <clears throat> she is uh, suffering from migraine with flickering of the left eye during the aura and numbness of the tongue. The migraine is worse before menses. She feels tension in the whole body, which is most worse in the cervical region. Her posture is like a shell with pulled up shoulders. The migraine is worse before menses. She feels tension in the whole body, which is most worse in the... Oh, this is... sorry. <laughs> Uh, she is depressive, depressive with a lacking in motivation and has a low self-confidence. She thinks that she is never good enough. She has always a fear to fail so that she feels often blocked in her studies. She has a feeling of powerlessness and can't handle the dominating behavior uh, by others. And she has a very helping nature and feels too much responsible for others. She often has a guilty conscience. She feels often worried about her future and broods if she can finish her study or not. And she has a strong fear of loss and thinks that nobody can love her because she is not worth for it. She has a lot of nightmares too. So you can see the repertorization I did and um, it's a uh, grief, silent, ailments from abuse after being sexually, ailments from fright, ailments from anticipation, uh, fear, failure of, forsaken feeling beloved by his parents, uh, fear waking on dream from a flickering headache before, numbness of the tongue, and pain menses before aggravation. And you can see the only remedy which is uh, go uh, totally through is uh, Netmore. So I, get, I started with the Natum Reaticum 30C. Um, and she got much better in general, but also on the emotional level. And before taking the remedy, she had at least one or two times a week a severe migraine. And now with the migraine came very seldom and was ameliorated immediately after a dose of Netmore. 
In the course of treatment, old symptoms like uh, vaginal uh, fungal infections and cystitis occurs, but was healed with the dose of Netmore. So here you can see it's uh, really good that the old symptoms uh, came up and uh, we could heal it with uh, the, rem uh, the constitutional remedy too. In April 2015, she underwent an intense grieving process with a lot of weeping. Since many years, she was not able to cry before that. So that was really also a good cleaning process, uh, not only for the body, but also for the mind and the emotions. After taking nat nat natrium, uh, she faced up with family and confronted the family members for the first time with the sexual abuse by her father. Her psychotherapist supports her in this healing process. In June 2015, she developed severe anxiety states after a female friend of her was hugging her too tight so that she felt fixed in her arms. So the flashbacks came up with this situation because this worked as a, as a trigger for her. A lot of flashbacks, uh, I have this, I told you already. After taking one more dose of Netmoor 30C, the anxiety in the flashbacks disappeared and the, she found back her emotional balance. So you can see I didn't go very high. No, uh, I started with a 30C and it worked really wonderful with uh, symptoms which were there also for a long time. But after some time again, the old symptoms occurred and itching of the scalp, scalp and red, itching, painful, unbearable neurodermatitis on the neck accompanied by negative emotions. She had neurodermatitis in her childhood and now also she f she's feeling like a child. She said, I'm a child again and my mother is angry with me because I have neurodermatitis. In her eyes, I was a stressful child because she couldn't control the neurodermatitis and had to go to doctor uh, with me very often. I was feeling forsaken, disorientated and alone. Properly, I was feeling not well, but I couldn't tell it to my mother because she was so angry with me. Actually, I wanted her to take me in her arms and to comfort me, but with all the rash on my body, I felt myself not beautiful and not lovable. After another dose of natrium, the neurodermatitis was much better and vanished totally after some days. Shortly before finishing her, her bachelor thesis, she got again very depressive thoughts. The healing weeping was finished and she got again a numb feeling that something is very bad. She has a fear of failure in her studies, a feeling of mental overload, difficulties of falling asleep and a lack of motivation. Natrium stabilized her again. Additionally, she worked with her therap therapist on the fact that she is afraid to finish her studies successfully because she is worried about to be in competition with her mother. The fact, uh, this fact, she just realized right now. Natural and different potencies stabilized her very much. And the course of the healing process, you could see easily an occurring of the suppressed, suppressed old symptoms, which vanished with Natmoor. The processing of the experience of sexual violence and other bad experience in her childhood was initiated with a Natmoor and accompanied with a psychotherapy. The post-traumatic symptoms were also healed with the constitutional remedy. Now I want to show you a second case. This is a case of a 33 years old German Kurdish woman, a German mother, Kurdish father. And uh, the case taking on, was on the 22nd of December 2014. 
As a child, uh, she was sexually abused by her aunt. Uh, since then, she couldn't experience any sexual relationship. And she is extremely uh, mistrusting everybody. So, so she's a very controlled person uh, who never shows any feelings openly. And her biggest fear was also that someone could see her fear. So she wants to hide this. And since summer 2014, she feels extremely tired and sleepy. And she slept also many, many hours in the afternoon. And because of her depression, she took since uh, three months an antidepressant, which uh, didn't bring any relief until uh, the time of the case taking. She has a strong sensation that she never reached on this earth. And she feels ashamed and criticizes herself because she sees herself as a traumatized victim. She thinks that actually she didn't suffer enough to claim this label for herself. This is also very typical for trauma victims, that uh, on the one side they are suffering a lot from their experience, uh, but on the other side they always believe that it didn't take place or maybe it was not severe enough, it was not bad enough. Uh, and this is also a um, defense mechanism uh, so that they don't have to feel all the feelings which are coming up when they really realize what happened to them. Until one year ago, she never evaluated the sexual abuse as violence and as a crime. Only since one year, she's totally, uh, this is totally different. On the other hand, she's very angry that nobody's nobody can see her suffering also. She wants that her family recognizes what she had gone through. But everybody just sees her as a power woman. But this is only one side of her. When she was 16 years old, she left her parents' home. Five years ago, she went back and lives again with her parents. She feels very ashamed because she wants to live independent but she was not able to. She felt abandoned uh, em emotionally from her mother in very early years. That is why she felt she never reached the earth and that made it difficult for her to be in real contact with other people. She calls it uh, symbiosis trauma, contact trauma or relation uh, relationship trauma. Her mother used her as a partner sub substitute on the emotional plane. She still feels emotionally abused by her mother until nowadays. And she never felt accepted by anyone with her feelings. That is why she su uh, suppresses her feelings so that nobody can see it also and hurt her again. She's very afraid to be at the mercy of someone or that the person uh, could utilize her. She doesn't feel secure in her parents' home. She's very afraid of her father when, she, when he comes next to her, although he never sexually abused her. But from the rest of the world, she's much more afraid. She feels ashamed that she needs her parents in her age. Because in, um, in Germany, it's uh, usual, <laughs> usual that um, the children leave the home of the parents when they are 18 years old. Yeah, it's not like in India that uh, families live together. So most of the uh, children, when they are 18 or 19, they leave the home. And she even come, came back to her home in this age. So this produces so much shame uh, in her. Um, she wants to create her own space. She wants to go into the world to make her experience uh, and experiences and she wants to be seen, but she is not to be able to do the first steps in this direction. She has uh, difficulties to fall asleep and her sleep wake cycle is very disturbed. The inner restlessness is especially in the evening and in the night very high. 
In the night she is awake and in the daytime she is sleeping. She distracts herself until she can fall asleep. Even already as a baby she had difficulties to fall asleep and was crying very much. She is suffering from existential fear and is afraid to be poor. Um, I gave her Lacumanum in LM6 potency and started on the 21st January 2015 with this remedy. Um, in this case, I didn't do the repertorization, uh, which I normally do. Uh, but um, when she was telling me her story, uh, this remedy came to my mind because she had not the feeling that she came into this world. She didn't reach this world. So this reminds me um, on, uh, to the remedy of Lacumanum. And I want to present you some uh, of the uh, symptoms Philip Bailey described in his book, uh, which are matching very good uh, with the symptoms of this pa uh, patient. This is uh, the lack of maternal caring, then the unsatisfactory uh, connection with the mother, uh, the forsaking feeling, uh, and unable to accept the love which is giving, uh, given by others. And um, she is uh, struggling uh, for survival as a subject. Never feels secure and every challenge feels to be life-threatening, threaten which uh, is of course related to the trauma she experienced uh, with the sexual abuse. Uh, and the mistrust. Nobody is trustworthy. Nobody helps me. If I want to survive, I only can trust myself. This is a feeling of Lacumano. Feeling totally alone in a foreign, wo foreign world. Feeling of alienation. Feels herself abandoned by friends and family. Want of independence. Emotionally intense, needy, dominant, oversensitive against rejection. Perfectionist, codependence, and difficult relationship to the mother. Often a cold, unreachable mother, uh, efforts to gain the love of the mother. And the tendency for rebellion is close connected with the awareness of being a victim. She can't bear injustice. A needy and dominant mother teaches the child to feel responsible for the feelings of others. In such families, the child learns that it is cruel if it doesn't fulfill the needs for attention of the mother. The child learns that she has to deny its own needs and has to take care for the needs and emotions of others. Otherwise, a child will be rejected by the mother. And this was uh, exactly the, um, you can say, the di dynamic between mother and daughter in this case also. She revolts against male authorities and also have, has a clearly feminist attitude. Overreactive against the smallest lack of sensitivity sensitivity, resentment uh, against the mother because she was not caring for her or emotionally abused her. The father doesn't play a big role in her life and very often men are seen as useless, insensitive, immature or threatening. She hides a lot of grief uh, behind her smile and she sees herself as a victim and is insulting family members, especially the mother because she uh, they betrayed her. If a newborn can't get a connection to the mother, then it feels to be like in a no man's land. This feeling of a gap and separation leads to the feeling of being abandoned, of not belonging to this world. Ambivalence is a keynote of this remedy. And she doesn't feel a ground under her feet. 
Sometimes she feels disconnected from her body too. Tendency to not finish her tasks. Uh, the first follow-up was on the uh, 26th of March in 2015. So she said, last night I had a dream. I was dreaming that I was about to deliver a child. There was no preg pregnancy before, so I felt very unprepared for the birth. And during this process of delivery, I suddenly got some small pieces of glass into my eyes so that my eyes started bleeding. There were nurses around me who were caring for me. Suddenly, someone told me that I'm in a process of divorce. I was not married, but someone would divorce from me now. The pain was an extreme, the delivery, the bleeding eyes, becoming abundant from whoever. After this, I was crawling on my hands and knees to my previous kindergarten. I wanted to go to my mother, who was supposed to be there, but only my father was there. As I asked him where my mother was, he said that, she is not there. I was turning around, didn't listen to his further explanations. I was deeply disappointed and disillusioned. Um, I think in this dream, she was really doing the process of the of her birth, actually, and. Um, and uh, she got uh, something like a relief and she came to this earth, I think. This uh, is what uh, how I interpret this dream. Uh, she found her own flat and will shift there soon. This is really amazing, no? because after five years, she couldn't go out of the home of her parents. And now, uh, after two months uh, with the remedy, she really found uh, a home for herself. And her fears also reduced very much. And just now they become more again, um, become more again, because she will take a big step to live alone. And of course, then a lot of fears raised up also, if she can, uh, if she's able to do this or not. And also the separation from the parents was um, also a big uh, topic for her. So I, a lot of fears arising up at this time also. But because uh, Lac Humanum worked so well, I told her to continue with the Lac Humanum LM12. Then the next follow-up was on the 26th of May. And meanwhile, she shifted in her own flat. The remedy helped her in removing her blockage to move out from her parents' home and her uh, fears become much, became much less now. Her parents wanted to finance, finance her apartment and forced, first she thought, oh, I should agree because she had no money also. But then she took all her courage and uh, refused uh, this offer so that she can feel more independent from um, her parents. And uh, in Germany, uh, you get the rent from the job center, which is uh, something uh, you can say uh, like a social center. And uh, they pay the rent and also the money for the livelihood. This is very less money, but you can survive from this. She feels so very much happy to be independent from her parents and stay in her own apartment. After taking the remedy, she started crying and to express the long hidden grief. She could grieve for everything she never had and what she lost. She found a psychotherapist to work on her past experiences. Depression became less so that she now wants to wean off the antidepressant with the support of her psychiatrist. Her addition for sugar and cigarettes could be reduced very, very much. And she doesn't watch TV anymore, what she did the whole day before. 
Nowadays, a lot of different feelings comes up and she tries to handle this together with a psychotherapist instead of suppressing her feelings. After a dietary change, she lost 10 kg of weight. She started doing sports and she came out of the stagnation and feeling alive. But sometimes she also feels restless. Until now, she took lacumanum in different LM potencies. And she's quite stabilized now and really stopped taking this, uh, the antidepressants, which was really a very big success. And right now, she feels stable enough to search for a job. Okay. Okay, this was uh, the presentation. These are the two cases I wanted to show you um, that how you can um, treat uh, even severe post-traumatic stress disorders uh, very, very good mm -hmm. with the right uh, constitutional remedy. And even in the acute cases, you can, um, you can, um, give uh, aconite, opium or other um, remedies who take off all the panic attacks and the different feelings which are, came up in the first uh, stage of the shock. Okay, um, I think I will go to, through the chat because I couldn't do this during the <laughs> presentation. I'm sorry for this. Uh, do I have time or not? We will come back uh, with the chat uh, just after the uh, end of the session. At that time, we will take, take up the questions uh, from that the participant. Uh, yes, but I have to go out in eight minutes, you know. Okay, so you can see the chat right now. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, Dr. Nat Nat Natalie Ho uh, asked, uh, may I know for patient depressed after trauma since that issue, patient can't walk out from that issue till need another antidepression medication, which is diagnosed as MDD, very struggling in life, mind symptoms affected very much, very stubborn patient, negative thinking, can't accept people advice, keep on telling that nobody understands her, can Ma'am, give some advice on it. Oh, actually, uh, I think you know that it's very, very necessary to take a, uh, to make a good, good uh, case taking in um, these mental disorders. Uh, I do case taking at least two hours, <laughs> so I'm not able to uh, to give the advice in a in a short form because there are so many things we have to check before we have to give the remedy because. Um, it's it's good when we are starting in the beginning with the right remedy and not uh, just trying the things. No? For this, we have to really think good about the remedy. So I'm sorry, I can't tell this right now. Uh, I can share the notes. Yes, I can do this. Uh, okay. Other questions, ma'am. Only those two questions were there. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Okay. So I think I can. Uh, I send. I can send you the. Uh, no questions. The PDF of the presentation, uh, Dr. Khan, when you can share it. Yeah. Sure, ma'am. Sure. Thank you so much. Uh, so that's so sweet of you uh, because there are very less people who share their presentation with the. Uh, for the uh, for share, for the like uh, so that people can get no, gain knowledge. Thank you so much, mm -hmm. ma'am. There are two more questions. Yes. Uh, uh, we can. Uh, there are there are short questions only. Like which software you use, ma'am? I use uh, uh, and Rada. Rada opens. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and uh, Dr. Hetel wants to know in how many months after treatment do you expect result in chronic deep seated traumatized conditions? Uh, this you can't say actually because it depends on, on so many uh, different um, things. It, it depends on how much uh, miasm are involved also. 
and how much resilience factors are there, how much support they have from their environment and how um, yeah, how much they want to go really to digest this and do something. No? A lot of traumatized people really don't want to to go forward because the feelings which are coming up in this process are very, very difficult to handle. So it depends on so many things you can't say, but sometimes you can get relief even in the first day after giving the remedies uh, in some uh, aspects. And uh, sometimes it takes uh, two, three, sometimes four or five months until you can get the first results that you feel, oh, it's going further. So you, do, you need a lot of patience with, uh, with these kind of uh, post-traumatic stress disorders when they are chronified, you know. But if you have the right remedy and there uh, is a good, the factors are good, you even can get the results in very short time also. Thank you so much, ma'am, for uh, such a wonderful explanation. I hope the query of Dr. Hetel is uh, sorted. Uh, we, we are really thankful to ma'am for her contribution uh, to the webinar and for such a great presentation and great, uh, uh, so, so, and so nice, uh, nicely presented cases that all the audience enjoyed. I hope uh, they got to learn a lot because we are getting so many uh, compliments for you. Also, there was a compliment ma'am that you are looking very pretty from Dr. Neetu Aroda. Oh, she commented uh, that very pretty. So thank you so much, ma'am, for your contribution. You, because um, uh, like in your very busy schedule, also you took out time to guide uh, the students. That's that's uh, that's a sweet of you. Thank you, Dr. Sani. You want to say something? Uh, yeah. what, I, what I see among the two cases that you have presented, you have shown the perseverance and waiting for the single medicines to work. This is the most classical things that you have demonstrated to the audience. And I hope that people will learn to develop the patience and courage to wait and watch till the medicines act. This is great things that you have demonstrated to these cases of the traumatized cases. Even in such a problem when there is no such acute pain is there, but that situation, psychology, you have to wait and watch, and if you can learn these things, every, everything, homeopathy can be uh, experienced in a better way. So thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, you're very but nice. I learned from Professor Dr. Vitulkas where I studied in Greece. So he really has a lot of patience to watch and wait and be careful with the reaction to the remedies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I so thank you that I could join the session. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. And I have to leave because now I have. Uh, no, I understand. I understand. And thank, thank you for giving so such a good uh, time for us. Thank you. Okay. So I I will press the red button with the telephone to leave. Uh, oh, no, 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 ma'am! No. Don't press the red button. Just close your window. This oh, okay. your yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. bye. So, so, we can proceed further. Yes, sir. Uh, so, now uh, it is the time to listen to a great researcher who is also the son of a research, researcher. And he is none other than Dr. Anirban Sukul, the son of. Uh, Dr. N.C. Sukul, who has done and contributed towards the CKC and bringing the homeopathy, uh, understanding about the homeopathy. Dr. Arindabar Sukul completed his PhD from Krishna Bharti University in India and research associateship from the same university. He studied homeopathy later on and presently he is director of the Sukul Institute of Homeopathic Research at Kolkata. India. He has published 21 papers in international journal, peer-reviewed journal, and authored a book published by Lunar Academic Publisher, the Netherlands. He has lectured on homeopathy in 16 countries across Asia, Europe, UK, and um, uh, USA. He has he confirmed with the Junior Scientist Award, Lifetime Achievement Award, Gold Medal Award, 
UK and Man of Excellence Award, etc. from abroad. Dr. Fukul is also a member of the research committee Liga Medicorum Homeopathica International LMHI, Germany. He has a lot of interest in the research work. He has done neuropharmacology in homeopathy, effect of neurotransmitter drugs on experimental catalysis in mice. He has worked on alcoholism, anti-alcoholic effects of few homeopathic drugs on the loss of right reflex things. Then uh, he has electronic and NMR spectra of few homeopathic drugs. He has tested an anti-alcoholic drug on plant origin on voluntary ethanol intake in rats. Anti-alcoholic drugs of plant origin on in, uh, alcohol induced loss of right reflex, uh, writing of reflex in tadpoles towards uh, and mice. So, so many research activities are there, and today we are going to listen his uh, contributions and his effects. And I, uh, it will be a great listening uh, from a great scholar of the homeopathy. So, welcome, Dr. Sukul. And I request you to start your presentations. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sahani. And a uh, very good afternoon to all of you. Uh, first, I'd like to thank the organizers and especially Dr. Sahani uh, for uh, organizing such a wonderful seminar for in two phases in two and three days. Uh, so there are part one that has been done already, uh, I think on 15th, and the second one it started from 28th yesterday. So this has been a three days program again, and it's a webinar. Um, Dr. Sahani has been fantastic of doing this such things uh, uh, while uh, we have been experiencing such a pandemic in a bad shape of a life, changed everything, but. Uh, uh, Dr. Sahani has been a um, humble follower of him. He has been uh, so respected in homeopathic administration and uh, Dr. B. Sahani, who have, was introduced homeopathy in a different way, treating uh, with the uh, hairs in terms of homeopathic medicines. So I have been to his uh, clinic uh, for some time in uh, Dr. Sahani in Patna and I have learned a lot and, will, and um, still will be learning from him, uh, I hope so. So today's my topic uh, is towards uh, um, morely on the research, of course homeopathy cannot be with uh, some clinical aspects, so I'll be presenting some clinical uh, success of my uh, homeopathic, with the homeopathic medicines. And uh, Sukul Institute as a co-organizer of this uh, webinar uh, has been uh, established by my father, Professor Nirmal Chandra Shukul in the year 2000 in Shantini Ketan, West Bengal. So my father, who is a retired professor now and also the uh, ex-dean in the Faculty of Science in Vishwabharati University, who has uh, established this institute and now we have researchers so we collaborate with other research institutes, we collaborate with universities using their sophisticated labs and we, we, we uh, get out of those uh, some good experiments, uh, some good contribution contribution as far as the scientific science is concerned. Uh, we have uh, publications in uh, international journals, mostly or mainly they are on the evidence-based or laboratory-based work on the, with the homeopathic medicines. So we have instruments in our uh, laboratory in Sukul Institute. Also, we definitely collaborate with uh, Vishwabharati University. Uh, we have a good access uh, with the Department of Botany. My wife, uh, Dr. Soma Sukul, who is currently the Associate Professor uh, in this University of Vishwabharati University in the Department of Botany. So she is also engaged to the uh, science of uh, the scientific work of Sukul Institute. So we have a good access. What I try to say is that we have a good access to uh, very sophisticated modern instruments uh, 
with these universities and of course research institute like Bose Institute in Calcutta. So I now uh, go uh, to the PowerPoint presentation. So I may be invisible. I don't know what I will be. Uh, is this presentation be visible? Not yet, sir. Let me share your screen. Okay. Uh, please uh, share again. <laughs> is it? Yeah, is it? It is visible. Just go to the PowerPoint now in your computer. Yes, sir. You can okay. on the uh, slideshow and it's visible absolutely. Fine, thank you. So the topic today is the biological effects of ultra low doses. So as I uh, introduce myself as very nicely, Dr. Sahani has made it already, but just a brief addition to it is that uh, I am the director also in the Sukut uh, Institute of Homeopathic Research. And I am uh, the visiting physicians in two countries like Republic of Philippines and Thailand. I'm also an honorary physician there at the Ministry of Public Health in Ireland. So more importantly, Sukul Institute uh, publishes um, the international peer-reviewed online journal known as Clinical and Experimental Homeopathy. So I being the editor of this journal, and uh, I'm also the in the board of editors in some other journals which are no related with the homeopathic science. Uh, this does mean that it's a pure integration. I think it's a proper integration of homeopathy and science because they have hired such a pers person who is who has the background of uh, science and homeopathy as well. So I'm also in the Journal of Neurodegenerative Disease and Disorder published from the United States, uh, Journal of Pulmonology and Clinical Research london and especially this journal has been very popular because of such pandemic you know the um, pulmonological effects of covid epidemiology also being as an important journal nowadays it's published from the united states journal of phytochemistry and biochemistry us again and journal of microbiology and biotechnology reports from london so Right onto the experiment is that the writing reflex model. Now, what is writing reflex? You see, we are uh, sitting properly in a proper posture. Maybe we are standing, maybe we are sitting sometimes. So, this normal posture of any animal or any uh, human is being corrected by some uh, process which is known as writing reflex. So, once our writing reflex is correct, it does mean that we are in a correct or normal posture of what we are trying to, or what are we going to. And if we lose our writing reflex, we will lose our the normal erect posture. So this is especially being maintained by the nuclei of the midbrain. In order to do some experiments with the homeopathic medicines, we have to have the symptoms first. So what we did, we produced the loss of writing reflex in animal, in mice. Some common symptom of loss of writing reflex is that when you are walking, you will tend to fall. Or if your writing reflex is totally lost, you will be fallen or you will be lying on the streets or lying on the floor. So this has been achieved by a mouse by injecting ethanol intraperitoneally. 
ethanol is known to or overdose or the toxic effect of ethanol is similar with the loss of writing reflex. So toxic effect of or overdose of ethanol produces some imbalanced work, some double vision, and if it is totally lost, the right indexes, the overdose or toxic effect of alcohol will uh, drive the human being to fall on the or the lie on the street. So that is the total loss of the light and reflex. So exactly we did the same. So we uh, injected the ethanol into to mice, in the batch of mice, and we have experiment with Nux vomica as Nux vomica is thought or can be the drug of choice for anti-alcoholics. So we injected first, this is how we injected first and then synthesized foam. You can see that alcohol and how long this um, a mouse is remained on the loss of right English flex posture or remained in the lying posture is the slip time. So this is called the slip time. It can be a uh, few minutes, two minutes for a mouse, can be three minutes for the other. So as the individual changes, the slip time changes because of how, how the uh, mouse is tolerant to the alcohol. So this is exactly, so you can see on your left is the alcohol only. So there has been no treatment with Nux vomica. So only ethanol injection has been given. And you can see that 75 minutes, nearly 75 minutes, the duration of sleep time was. So on the lying posture, it was there until 75 minutes. While treating the same mice, of, same mice, the same batch of mice with the Nux from 30, you can see there is a significant difference in the in reducing the sleep time, so which has been uh, statistically significant in manhood test. This is, as we know, that's homeopathy. That's the conventional method of preparing homeopathic medicine is the aqueous ethanol. So there should be the 89% ethanol and 11% uh, or 10 to 11% of water, distilled water. So it is in aqueous ethanol. We have produced Nux vomica in the proper or the conventional method with aqueous ethanol. We have produced with pure ethanol. We have also produced the Nux vomica with pure water. So there are three kinds you can see. Now here comes the control. There is no proper way, the method of preparation. And you can see there is almost cut off time. It is nearly 100 minutes of sleep time of the batch of mice. And next comes to the treatment with 90% ethanol. So that is aqueous ethanol, the exact way the homeopathic medicines have been produced. So there comes the maximum reduction in the sleep time. And while the next poem is prepared with pure water only, it doesn't give that much of effect. And it is almost with the level of the control and almost similar in case of the pure ethanol. So there is no such significant reduction while it is being used or prepared with pure water or pure ethanol. So it also proves that homeopathy medicines only works or the maximum effect it will, it will get while it is being prepared with aqueous ethanol. And also it proves that Nuxtom has significant effect on the reduction of the sleep time treating with the ethanol injection of albuminoids. Uh, this is uh, some in terms of a reverse way of um, the alcohol tolerance. Uh, I'm not going into the detail because uh, you see effects of alcohol intake in toad. So this is the this is the control. This one 
So this is something uh, more, I think uh, there are three, one, two, three, four, four uh, parameters of Nux uh, Formica has been used, one giving IP injection, one oral, Nux 30 oral group, Nux 1000. So this is a bit different, so I'm not discussing some details in it. So with this experiment, we can conclude that uh, Nux Formica is a drug of choice for ethanol. It's, it's been known already for uh, that we knew, we knew that Nux Formica is a drug of choice. But this is how we have demonstrated that Nux Formica is the, uh, has the anti-alcoholic effects in animals. You know, shift uh, to the other experiment is the ex effect of rustox and costicum on rat adjuvant arthritis. So uh, this is how you see that, uh, as I told you that in order to do some experiments with the homeopathic medicines, we have to have the symptoms first. And because the animals are not able to tell you the symptoms, so we have to produce or create symptoms to have experiments with homeopathic medicines. On the extreme left, you, you, you will see this is a normal hind paw of a mouse or a rat. And this is a swollen, extremely swollen, and these are so on. So in these experiments, what we did to have the symptoms first, we injected the freons adjuvant to the hind paw of the mouse, of each mouse. Or in case of here, it is rats. Freon adjuvant is known to produce a the similar sort of symptoms which are there in arthritis. So we will not be able to find the arthritic rats, but we can create the arthritic-like symptoms in rats. So what this exactly the free and adjuvant does? What it does, it inflames. You see the inflammation here, and once it is inflamed, it will create a pain. So there are two major symptoms you will get here, which are similar or exactly similar in case of arthritis of human. So on the extreme left, there are no injection, no creation of symptoms with the free answer adjuvant. And of course, there is no treatment with causticum and rustox. We choose causticum and rustox because this is known uh, to have a potential effect on the arthritis we know we know already but this is the way we are demonstrating here that yes causticum and rustox have arthritic effects on uh, rats liu is the left hind paw is being injected but untreated so there is no treatment of causticum or rustox but there is only the injection of free and children to produce the maximum effect of arthritis. This is LIC, this is the hind paw is being injected with free and saturated and treated with causticum. I just check once again that am I audible? Hello? Am I audible? Sir, yes sir. Audible okay. sir, audible, audible. audible. So, uh, this is with the causticum injection and you can see there is inflammation is re reduced here and left hind paw is injected with free and adjuvant and then treated with rustox you can see there is more good there are better result here with treating causticum and right paw hind paw is injected and treated with causticum we know in homeopathy there are laterities, there are medicines that are more working, better working in the on the left side of our body and there are more on the right side of our body. Causticum is known to have better effect on the right side while rustox is being in the left. So you can see this is being, uh, it's a left hand paw and rustox is treated. You can see, if you compare, just see this, you will have a better, uh, inflammation is better now. And rustox is causticum here on the right side. Now here comes the results. You see the median volume of paw in microliter. So this how because 
until now we have been seeing with the slides and seeing the inflammation how it is inflamed <clears throat> but to produce any scientific results you have to produce it the data so what we did what uh, we uh, marked a hind paw with a marker and dipped it in a filled beaker which is placed inside a measure, measuring cylinder so the water will be coming out after taking the hind paw will be automatically measured with the measuring cylinder with the volume of the of the water we can measure the volume of the inflammation so this is what exactly and you can see on the left extreme left it is u u there is no treatment and no free hands adjuvant so this is exactly the normal hind paw and 800 is the volume and next to it is the maximum inflammation is here because no treatment has been given here only the free hands adjuvant injection and next to it is the causticum on the left hind paw treatment treated right hand a uh, left hind paw now here treated with rustox and right hind paw treated with causticum here you can see again that rustox on the left is more effective causticum also while right in the more effective but not on the left that much so this how we measured the inflammation of the hind paws now there are another as common symptom is the pain exactly what exactly the reason when the patients come to us is due to the pain invariable pain so the pain is being measured by open field test so pain is a feeling but we have to measure it to produce in scientific journals so we measured this pain in, through open field activity test what is exactly you see it's a animal tray here and this tray is being uh, marked with squares it is checkerboard fashion and a mouse or the rat is being placed here so by just putting it still a mouse is uh, being placed here and mouse once the mouse will be placed it will start moving so it will move one cross then another uh, cross then another so we will count that how in a 300 seconds the how, how many crosses this mouse is being traversed or it can able to traverse so this cross we will count this cross will uh, be uh, result or will be the result of the pain so the more the pain they will be less movable and will traverse the less cross more less the pain it will move more faster and it will cross more uh, cross traverse more crosses so this is exactly the uh, terms of the pain how we could measure and you can see the results here this is the normal mouse exactly not exactly absolutely normal ones so it can traverse maximum squares here and you can see this is the maximum pain is here because no treatment has been given so there is least movement but the minimal movement and this has been treated with causticum on the left hand paw so it can move while being treated with last stocks on the left hand paw it can move faster than the causticum so and again right hand paw is being treated so it can again reduce uh, the pain so that the mouse could able to traverse more squares in 60 seconds this is the cut of time so with this we can uh, able to see that causticum is more effective on the right side of our body and left side is more by the rust dots both causticum and rustox have been potential to reduce the pain in breath activate arthritis. There is another method, it's a very standard international method to measure the pain, it's the inclined floor method. You see, uh, there is an iron reed, uh, the net, and the mouse is being placed on the top with its tail. And on the bottom, there is a uh, feeding material, bedding material, and some food. So once the mouse, uh, the rat, 
sees the, its food, it, it will come down. It sees the bedding material, it will come down. So the more the pen, it will come more slowly, and less the pen, it will move faster to come to the bottom, to food, to have the feed. So this is again the another method of measuring the pain. So this is exactly here. You can see it very quickly comes down and it took maximum time without any treatment and well causticum. It has got less, very less in comparison to this and rust stocks and causticum again. So we conclude the experiment that homeopathic pregnancies have an effect on animals, while causticum is more effective on the right side of the body, rustox is more on the left. Causticum and rustox are potential homeopathic medicines in rat actual arthritis. So these are the some uh, few uh, instruments that we have been using, uh, like FTIR, Fourier transforming photometer. This is uh, energy dispersive extra spectroscopy. This is UV visible spectrophotometer with the Peltier system here. And this one. So now I come to the clinical part of our, my lecture. You can see this is a tumor, cystic tumor here. And it's been treated with calcarea, artica, thuja, and hypericum. And no more treat tumor here. Leucoderma, with the patch, white patch, and it's been fading with the medicines like calcarea, thuja, bryonia, sulfur, tuberculum, rustol. So, tumor again here. And you see this tumor has been burst out with giving this fuja in higher potency. So Arnica, Fuja, Sulfur, Hypericum. This is Lipoderma. Again, you can see the fingertips with Calcarea, Nectum, Sal, Bryonia. Tumor again of the child. It's still there. But producing with carbo animalis, heterolava, vaselinum, vaselinum, arnica, thuja, calcia, fluor. It's a case of psoriasis. Treating with these medicines. Same one, so extensive. Uh, this is the arthritis with the deform, deformities, you can see. And here you can see the changes. The homeopathy medicines also can see the changes of the bone, where it is already deformed. With these medicines and also of course other medicines. So with uh, that one, that I showed you the previous one, the other leg, secured. So this is a skin cancer. See here, this patient is still undergoing and doing quite good with this. Thuja, arsenic, euphrasia, as for the symptoms only. Alopecia, here, here, with Nuxpom, Marxol, Sulfur, Ciclinum. This is a case of a tumor which was there for the last two, uh, 12 years and it has been burst out in just three months of treatment. And now it is completely gone. Only there is a big scar was there because of the skin that grew after, grew after. And this is the extensive case of leg ulcer. Now, uh, the patient uh, first came uh, with her husband and with a very anxious one in my clinic and because you can see the, how degree of lesion and how, you see the gigantic leg it's swollen and highly inflamed. The patient could hardly able to walk and she was advised to amputate her leg. 
So it was all of anxious moments with some pain and extreme death. Because of the ulcer, and you can see the homeopathy medicine can do here. See, there is slowly, slowly normal skin cell coming out, and you can see the size of the legs has been reduced a lot. So here you can see the reduction of the skin, and now it is totally gone. And the leg is quite normal size. So if you can compare with the stage one and stage three, you see this is the. Uh, marvel of homeopathic potencies. Alopecia again. Sorry, yes. It's a very common one, but still is here. It's a multiple fibroid of uterus. And here is the no fibroid, only the retroversion of uterus is there. I have been all doing every day, but still. Now I come to uh, some remarkable cases in my life. Uh, so this is what exactly I'm going to start. So as I pointed out that I've been there and the visiting physician in the in Thailand. So I have been going uh, every two months there. Now it has been stopped due to such situation. Now one day I received a call from my ancestral mother why I was in the meeting with the Chinese embassy. So that uh, uh, her son, who is 28 years old, has been there for 30 days in hospital in Bangkok. So you can imagine a 20 year old uh, boy is being hospitalized for the last 30 days. So how the situation of the, how the disease he has been passing through. So what exactly is passing through is that the SMS syndrome. What is SMS syndrome? Is the superior mesenteric artery syndrome. Now this superior mesenteric artery and the abdominal aorta is being tied up in such a way that there is no uh, that doesn't allow the food or water or whatever to pass into so to pass into the stomach. So the result ultimate result is the death because of malnutrition and when i visited him i visited him i saw a boy of 28 years old he was lying on the bed and he was just purple in color because he has been undergoing septicemia for the third time so i was not exactly called for this disease but i was called for to save him from septicemia which is for there for the third time. He was hospitalized in a five-star hospital in Bangkok, Sami Tibet, and the doctors there in the Sami Tibet, they were just surrendering because the third time and uh, septicemia and their medicines were, were not responding at all. So they're exactly from the homeopathy or I myself uh, get in, into. But this is exactly the SMS symptom what he was suffering from. This is this is the symptoms of SMS syndrome that we have some abdominal fullness and blotting, nausea, vomiting, so anorexia, so like this cramp like pains in the abdomen. So these are the factors that can contribute the syndrome that can prolong waste, weight loss, rapid growth previous abdominal surgery, so lumbar portion of the spleen coverage is lost when the lobosis. So these can be uh, pancreatitis, peptic ulcer. So these are the uh, some few other diseases which can cause this SMS syndrome. Now, you can see this is, uh, first he was diagnosed is the colonic stricture and it was advised for the surgery. So what they did, because she was not able to uh, get any food, there are four tubes who were inserted. One is supplying the lipid, the, another water, the carbohydrate and protein. So when I, when I entered into his room, I saw um, um, this boy was just having 
with the several tubes that are passing into her body. And he was with some, you can uh, understand that how exactly the mental situation of his and her, his family have been undergoing. Now here, on this third uh, diagnosis is being diagnosed as the SMS syndrome. Now here they clearly uh, say that suggestive of SMS syndrome. And here come and he has been started from here since January. And you can see this is in March. So almost just two and a half months. This patient, here you can see the result, almost complete resolution of duodenal obstruction. Normal small bowel transit time. So there is no such obstruction and nothing, but still the patient couldn't able to have the food, solid foods. He was still on the liquids because the intestine, the wall of the intestine was so thin, it's maybe thinner than a piece of paper. So once a solid food, maybe if a rice could enter into the intestine, it could just pierce into and it could come out to the peritoneum causing peritonitis and ultimately the death. So because of this reason, he was not allowed to give any solid food, only he was in there uh, on the liquids. So these are the medicines that I used, is the Nuxworm, Thuja, Chelidonium, Lycopodium, Phosphorus, Sulfur, Caliclo, Arsal, Rastrox and Veritrum album. This is another case, uh, uh, case uh, from Thailand. He has been suffering from hemiparesis, and he has been also into the. She has been also into the hospital when I first visited him. Her, which is another report of her CP brain. And when I first uh, saw. So, she suffered that, uh, I mean, the stroke, cerebral stroke, when I was here in India. So I gave her medicine over phone and she started this medicine. And after, I think, three weeks, I went to uh, Bangkok in my normal schedule and I visited her in the hospital. And you can see that uh, almost she is able to uh, raise uh, both the hands, although he was left side, it was. Uh, affected, yes, left sided hemiparesis. So, but you can see she is able to raise with her own. So, with all these medicines for the three weeks, it could, uh, she could be able to do this, and this much of result could be, have been achieved. See the other. And this is another one, this is something different, but uh, it's a case of Dengue. And this patient was almost dying. Everybody around uh, this patient were just uh, counting their minutes that the patient will have her, have his last breath. And I was there, fortunately, when this patient was suffered from Dengue. So I went to see the patient. He was in the hospital, in the hospital system, proper hospital system. You can see the platelet here is 216,000. And I was contacted when the platelet came down to 13,000, right? So I started the medicine from here, 13,000, and it uh, came down to 11. Then came down to five thousand only the platelet. So the patient, and you see the he is already in a hospital system. So platelet infusion had been uh, properly doing, but just within few minutes the platelet again come down. So even the platelet infusion was not successful because of the system, because of his body 
doesn't allow to increase or to maintain the same platelet that have been infused. So it's been within after a few minutes, uh, this, uh, they are tested and the tests were such things, so 5,000. And you see the 4,000, the patient is almost going to die now. And uh, I changed the medicine when he was in 5,000. And here comes the miracle. See, it's increasing, 5,000. 13,000. Sorry, I'm sorry. Yes, I'm going up. So you see 5,000. 4,000. And you see the LCPT here. 2,207, 252 SGPT. SGPT 207. So liver also being affected. And you see, it's been going rising. 31,000. You see, 73,000, so rising. And once it rises, it will just take its own course. So this is what exactly the homeopathy medicine does. It boosts its own immune system so that the patient can able to survive the way it actually uh, uh, required. C85,000, so it just goes out and the patient was survived. So as this we have uh, been experiencing this such a uh, pandemic, so I just able to make some few uh, COVID positive, uh, which they turn negative later on. Although nowadays the, I've been receiving so many uh, COVID positive patients, but mostly on the phone. Um, uh, most of them, those who are not even uh, test themselves even though I advise so but with all the symptoms of COVID positive they are there and they have been isolated in their home so this is the way but homeopathy as far as uh, and as also I think so many doctors that have been treating COVID positive patients they know very well that uh, how the homeopathy medicines are uh, uh, responding to it you see this is a case of SARS-CoV-2 positive so all of them, until now, not a uh, single person have been died in my hand. So all of them have been survived. So this is another case. So let's go to positive. So this one is another. This is, uh, you see, 83 years old. 83 years old and he has been my patient and he has been uh, chronic nephritis having uh, creatinine is more than three but steady he was having severe pneumonitis and but he survived ultimately he was uh, for 11 days he was putting in the oxygen but when they are just uh, leaving out the oxygen pipe, he was having the breathing difficulties, so immediately he was get back into the oxygen again. But with this medicine, with this uh, homeopathy medicine that I prescribed him, he was able to breathe on his own and slowly, slowly the oxygen support has been withdrawn. And he is totally out of danger and now he's free of COVID. Uh, this one another. Well, as COVID patients also, and but I could be able to put it here. So now I conclude my. Uh, this is the concluding part of my lecture. Is that how homeopathy or the alternative medicine because in in the western part in the western world. So this has been the field clinic hospital in Germany. So I was there, I've been invited there to visit their hospital. You can see this is the inside of the field clinic and the roof is a see-through. You can see the plants is here. So normal and real plant have been created to have to feel the and to feel the less effect of the, the the patients are there in a hospital, so 
there is every feel that the patient are there in an environment which they are taught to be. So this is exactly the position of the field clinic. You see, most of them are being situated and located in the hilltop. See here, this is the here hilltop, and you can see the lovely and beautiful scenario. Infrastructure wise, they are quite good and absolutely up to the mark. And this is, you can see the bed, see, and you can see the window. At the, there is totally, there is no such window, this is not being covered. So you can have every access with the environment, but rather the patients has every access with the environment. So they will feel that the every change and in Europe, there are very continuous change, unlike in tropical countries, there is a continuous change of weather. So they have able to feel the every change of the weather from time to time. And you can see the corridor here. This is the director Stefan uh, of Philly Clinic. This is the Paracelsus Hospital. This is a very old uh, hospital. Uh, I visited there in Germany. You can see the corridor is just a three star property. And you can see the infrastructure. And again, this is the quite absolutely touch of the environment, the changes of the environment that the patient should feel. So they are not, should not be confined in a wall. So their mind should be very clean and patient will uh, get out of it soon. This is the infrastructure. Paracelsus, Glasgow Homeopathic Hospital, another old homeopathic college in Glasgow. This is the corridor of Glasgow Homeopathy Hospital. See the beds, and again you can see the environment out. Uh, Robert Walsh Hospital in Stuttgart in Germany again. So this is not a homeopathy or alternative medicine hospital, but this is a pure normal uh, full-fledged hospital of Western medicines. But the important is there, I visited there, so importance is there that they have their alternative medicine department and here comes the alternative medicine department integrated medicine the beds here inside so they treat this is the hypothermia this is the pad of hypothermia and uh, she's a cancer patient, she's lying on the bed. So they have been treated with uh, heat pad. So that is another method of alternative medicine. So it's exactly not always with the homeopathy medicines, but alternative medicine, of course, includes homeopathy medicines. And this is the Poirot in Messini, um, in France, that I was invited there to visit to visit how homeopathy medicines have been produced. Uh, we have the borrow medicines in India now, and uh, it's been quite uh, popular. You see the large uh, there are the globules there inside in each bag. So with the mother tincture with the spray at uh, the potency. They have been sprayed there with the globules and they have been put into the uh, tube and have been sold. So they are the officials in Amboya. The Royal London Homeopathy Hospital is now named as the change to Royal London Hospital for Integrated Medicine in London. So Dr. Brian Kaplan will be. Uh, there, I think maybe tomorrow. So I was there with him. I met with him there, and I uh, attended one class, clinical class of Dr. Brian Kaplan. Uh, he, he was heading the um, team of doctors, so I was one of the doctor uh, treating a patient there, consisting of six doctors. So that is there in the OPD. So this is exactly. And the chairs, I think Brian was sitting here and the patient was here and we are here. 
So because of the privacy policy, we are not allowed to take the photo of the patients. And you can see the consultation room is so simple, not complicated at all. And there, the style of seeing the patient, taking the patient is that they check the patient for at least two hours. So they can get every mental symptom out of the patient to get noted and uh, to select the correct remedy. So this is the book that my respected father, Professor Nirmal Shukul, he authored this book with purely research high dilution pharmacology and homeopathy. This is another book I have been co-authored with him, High Dilution Effects Physical and Biochemical Basis, published by Chlorectin Professions from Netherlands. And this book was so popular that it has been translated into Italian version from Salus Informa. Inform, inf I'm sorry. So this was the same book being translated into Italian. This is a recent book that uh, I was one of the co-author. Transpecificity and Translationality in High Dilution Research, published by Cambridge College Publishing in 2019, only last year. So we have the collaborations, collaborators, natural practices. We are offering the Sukul Institute of us and the courses, online courses. We publish clinical and experimental homeopathy. I urge you all, to all the listeners, viewers, to please submit their valuable papers to this journal for consideration. And this journal has been indexed to such indexing authorities. And this is the uh, World Congress, Second World Congress that Security Institute uh, hosted in Bangkok in November 2019. It was a very successful uh, World Congress, and Dr. Sahani was kindly consented to him, and he was present here. 22 countries have been participated in this World Congress. And this is the best way to pay homage to this great man, Hanuman. This is the cemetery of Hanuman in Paris. And I am really thankful to all of you, to all the other listeners for your patience here. And thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Sukul. You have just uh, demonstrated the remarkable effects of biological effects of the homeopathic medicines. I think this is going to prove the efficacy and bring confidence in the youngest test. This type of the research is very much required, as well as the clinical practice that we have demonstrated. Uh, uh, the results were so miraculous. It is wonderful for all uh, for all to follow. And on this day, when we are celebrating, when we are paying tribute to a researcher. This, this is the one of the best tribute that we have can have through your presentations. So thank you, Dr. Sukul. And thank you, sir. Uh, we shall be uh, coming back again with you from the live chats after the uh, presentation of the guest speaker. And uh, after, till then, I will request you to be stay here so that sure. we can have the yes, question and answer. Yes. Now coming to the next speaker. Uh, Dr. Sanju, you are here in the house? Yes. Yeah, so you can... Uh, uh, you can... Uh, uh, you can... Uh, open so my presentation is not there, no, so it is uploaded, uploaded, no? Sir, sir, wait, 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 I have it. Wait, ah, sir. Yes, 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 it is there, yeah. Okay. So, Dr. Sanju, you are... Uh, you have uh, presented your now, our next speaker, and the last speaker, but not the least speaker, is Dr. Sanjeev Kumar Singh. Uh, as you know, well known, he is associated with me, and right from his childhood till date. And he was he has completed his BSMS, followed by the graded BSMS in 2005, 
and he completed his md degree also from the bra bihar university in the year of 2011 and presently he is doing he is associate professor in the department of repertory at gd memorial homeopathic medical college dr sanjeev has got a very good learning aptitude so he has conducted um, completed his uh, post graduate diploma course in hospital management and homeopathic management from the symbiosis university also uh, it is a clinical experience was uh, associated with me and uh, with the sincere devotion she became the managing director for our institute research institute of sanity drug transmission and homeopathy and his clinical ability which reported is outstanding as he started beginning the practice uh, through the report one of the remarkable things, things that you can notice in him that he, he don't know how to give the medicines only to the patient only the placebo there is no time is required but he is transmitting the medicines he was born in transmission transmission system of the medicines and he's transmitting the medicines throughout his career we are proud of him and uh, i feel that he, he has got great future ahead. Uh, he is also involved in homeopathic journalism and uh, he is uh, the uh, managing editor for our homeopathic uh, homeo taranga and uh, both, both in Hindi and English. Now we are making a peer review journal. His approach uh, to homeopathy is getting recognized with his presentations at various seminars. He has visited Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Nepal as delegates and presented his paper and he very actively engaged in the social networking of the professions and served general secretary of the uh, homeopathic medical association of india from the bihar state branch and presently he is a treasurer at the uh, uh, hmi dr sanjeev is uh, well very popular among his students for his presentations by uh, and his students flock around him not because of his lovely face, but because of his knowledge also. So with this brief introduction, now Sanjeev, you start your presentation so that uh, we can... Yes, sir. His topic is he's going to discuss about, tell us about the contribution of Dr. B. Sani because he lived with Dr. B. Sani for a long time. Yes, sir. Yes, Dr. Yasika, my presentation, please upload there. yes so first of all i would like to thanks uh, to dr sahani sir my guru and guardian and uh, what he told about me uh, credit goes to him only what i am today in the uh, field of homeopathy a great role he had and still i'm learning from him and uh, every day almost every day we are in contact uh, uh, with each other and uh, discussing with the sub, uh, you know uh, about the homeopathic and homeopathic subject and uh, uh, medicines disease everything so thanks a lot to dr sahani sir and uh, thanks to uh, all the participants uh, respected the chairperson of uh, this webinar dr Racheraman sir uh, co chairman dr jitendra kumar uh, esteemed speaker of today's uh, dr uh, uh, marian Collin from germany and dr anirban sukul from kolkata uh, my uh, subject is contribution of dr b sahani what to say about b sahani i can say i'm uh, i feel fortunate uh, that uh, around uh, five uh, five years i worked with him also and what i have learned from him uh, i can't express uh, a great role i can say a great role uh, in learning uh, the homeopathy and uh, what dr sahani told uh, about me that uh, i started learning from the repertory the first book was in my hand was the repertory the kent repertory and dr b sahani told me if you want to be a good homeopath you start learning the mind and mental symptoms of the repertory of the you know uh, the patient definitely will become a good uh, homeopath and I did that. Uh, I don't know I'm a good homeopath or not, but I did that. And what about the contribution of uh, Dr. Sahani? Just I'm going through that. Life lived with purpose. Yes, without purpose, uh, purposeless life, we all understand uh, what happened if uh, we are moving at 
in our uh, report you know the traveling desire and wandering so one thing is the traveling traveling desire is with the purpose if you are traveling with the purpose it comes under the traveling desire and if you are moving without purpose it comes under the wandering so being a human the purpose of life is very very important so living on purpose means becoming aware of who we are and what we bring in uh, to life each day the world of work <clears throat> and life has changed dramatically it is every time to explore and embrace new trends of course dr bandhu sani has shown the path man who is born helpless can create his own path of course a gifted mind you know by the nature man the most helpless creature on this earth is the man but because of this gifted mind we become more powerful the most powerful on this earth so born in most poorest part of the society dr sahani has demonstrated that the time and opportunity can be created live your life on purpose dr sahani had proved that learning is the way of life yes knowledge is the power of course we used to talk about the confidence we used to talk about the power if you have the knowledge you are confident if you have the knowledge you are powerful everything of this universe can be realized with determination with patience and perseverance a very nice quotation is there great work are performed not by strength but by perseverance and yes perseverance comes from the patience so if you have the patience definitely <clears throat> you will perceive the things you will achieve the goal what you have in your mind you know you can so the patience is very important dr sani has proved that simplicity counts of course beauty lies in simplicity only knowledge stored within life are the greatest simplicity with beauty of life and uh, it has been explained very nicely by swami vivekanand purity patience and perseverance are three essential to success and above all the love it's very very important when we talk about the love love it's a very pure thing we have the rubrics in our repertory also love sick so when we talk about the love the simplicity and purity it's very very important dr bandhu sani has proved love is great team is created with love and support we have to start our journey of our own yes if you want to do something a bigger thing then definitely will have to create a team and to create a team the knowledge and love and the purity it's very essential things dr sahani believed in his confidence criticism from other are inevitable if we if we believe in ourselves we will be recognized and followers join ekla chalore by ravindranath tagore yes i have remembered uh, one of our doctor was there in kolkata dr gaurinath mukherji and uh, he had nicely uh, very nicely uh, told about uh, this ekla chalor uh, ekla chalore uh, he was talking to dr sahani i was also there and he said when you uh, you know uh, 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 invent something new and when you uh, start doing something new first thing happened that the society opposed that things but still if you are uh, uh, having the confidence that i have to uh, do this you are not going to distracted by the opposition from the society then they start watching yours uh, to you and the finally they start following yourself so dr bandhu sahani did the same thing he did not get distracted what he was doing and finally he got the success and this transmission came in existence <clears throat> dr bandhu sahani has proved every individual has the capab uh, capability to contribute from the uh, perspective of life we have only one purpose to contribute only gain we get is being remembered by the generation yes we as a human being of the purpose 
we have started with the purpose so purpose is not to gain only to contribute this is the greatest purpose of a life of a human being so the contribution to the society to the humanity definitely should be there in one's life then only you will be recognized one student was asking to me how to be the best so i said if you want to be the best you will start thinking best to everyone definitely you will be the best so this is the purpose to contribute whatever you are hearing whatever you are learning from the students from the junior don't criticize just to contribute just to add what is the like lacking of their no so try to add and try to contribute so this was the thought of dr bandhu sahani dr bandhu sahani has applied philosophy to understand his purpose of uh, of his life applied philosophy purpose where we have to live one have to adopt for own way of life towards applied philosophy dr sahani has proved living in adversity yes adopting homeopathy in spite of his different background speaks of the magnitude of opportunity for change in life utilizing life to serve for the mankind yes adversity standing in adversity living in adversity it's just like pulsatilla no the adverse situation and in spite of that in that adverse situations pulsatilla try to maintain their uh, uh, identity try to maintain maintain their livelihood everything so in adversity if you are working if you are uh, uh, try to uh, trying to do something new no definitely it works so dr sahani has proved enjoying work like music yes when we talk about the music the uh, as a homeopath the first thing come in our mind is the repertory because the repertory the meaning of repertory has come from the repertoire and it simply means it's simply related with the music so he enjoyed homeopathic work like music practicing homeopathy with repertory is like living with the music of course if you are working with repertory definitely you will feel like that this is my personal experience too that i feel i feel very good when we uh, when when i work with the repertory when i when i work with the rubrics when i work with the symptomatology you will astonished that the reading the faces reading the uh, the gestures of the patients so harmony of profession lies in tuning oneself with work and it's a fine tuning when you select a single remedy you know it's a like finding the uh, uh, tuning and you get a very good music dr bandhu sahani has proved uh, adherence to the principle life dedicated to the law of similia similibus curentia no compromise at the cost of principle yes and stephen covey says that there are three constant in life change choice and principle and of course once uh, you change the principle there is so many ways but definitely you are going to deviate from the motto you are going to deviate from your goal so the principle should not be changed the principle of homeopathy be as a homeopath should not think about changing the principle and the principle of homeopathy we all know about that the similia similibus curentia dr sahani never thought like that that i should change the principle what he has created what he has done what he has invented it i can say it's a, a, a one step ahead of the principle of or the invention of dr uh, samuel hanneman dr sahani had proved uh, inflable uh, inflable law the similia similibus curentia nature's law of cure nature of human life expanded from invisible to visible if you want to change the visible first change the invisible of course dr bandhu sani has proved patience is power patience is not an absence of actions rather it is timing it waits on the right time to act for the right principles and in the right way patience is bitter but it's a fruit its fruits is sweet with patience you can bear up 
under any adversity and survive any defeat presence is power you can see the photographs it had been clearly depicting you know the presence is power and i have remember uh, in old clinic of uh, dr sahani you know uh, on the gate it was written there the presence is prayer and we used to talk about that and we used to tell to the patient also that you have the presence definitely you are going to be cured and same thing i would like to say to the young generation of the homeopathy that you should have the patience why i am telling because i have seen a very uh, what i can say the students those who have passed second uh, year or third year they start thinking about opening the clinic they start thinking about having uh, uh, associated with uh, someone and uh, starting uh, start to uh, earn the money it should not be like that we should have the patience then only we can achieve the goal we can learn the right thing learn the homeopathy properly so the patience is like a prayer and patience will give you the power and these things i learned from dr bandhu sahani dr bandhu sahani has lived as summum bonum of life an ultimate end or goal a summum bonum at which all human action is directed like as total he conceived of this end as necessarily connected with happiness live in line without uh, your higher good dr bandhu sahani had proved homeopathic medicine are beyond material the art of medicine lies in knowing what is essential and what is minute yeah what is single and what is noise what is trend and what is wiggle dilution of homeopathic medicine leads towards infinity infinite power yes we all are since last uh, uh, you know uh, yesterday we are talking about space dynamicity and our homeopathy era moves around this dynamicity infinite power when we talk about the vital principle uh, principle when we talk about uh, the uh, dynamic uh, nature of the homeopathic medicines this uh, the homeopathic medicines no the dynamic and he proved dr bandhu sahani proved this is really dynamic why because it can be transmitted from a distance and nowadays with this advancement of technology we can uh, feel we can experience the dynamicity in every everywhere in every field of our life so in homeopathy also this dynamicity is very much prevalent and we all should think about this the dynamicity of the homeopathy <clears throat> dr sahani has discovered to uh, transmit dynamic medicine from a distance yes this is the main thing which had been given a gift by dr b sahani to the homeopathic fraternity the transmission of homeopathic dynamic homeopathic medicine through a distance dr sahani added a new dimension to the mode of application of dynamic medicine property of homeopathy by applying them from a distance by using the natural belonging of the patients and as a natural belonging we are using hair of the patient you can use any natural belonging but hair is very convenient that's why we are using the hair, uh, hair. with uh, varied experimentation on thousands of patient of various category it is now proved beyond doubts that dynamic medicine of homeopathy can be transmitted from a distance and nowadays it is uh, not Uh, uh, a puzzle like the things no uh, so many patients thousands and thousands of patients are getting benefited and uh, so many doctors they have adopted uh, this uh, mode of administrations in all over the country even from outside the country from all over the globe we are treating the patient with this uh, mode of administration of the medicine dr bandhu sahani became a legend in the field of uh, medicine contribution of dr sahani in the field of medicine is fundamental and advanced dr sahani is among the few pioneers who had become an independent field of medicine dr sahani had proved life is a journey of research yes every steps we moved forward needs to become aware research are integrated part of life yes what is the research research is nothing only the awareness bring us to the research the apple was falling before the newton also but 
what did newton newton was aware of the surroundings newton was aware where he was seated and he established a principle so the awareness is very very important if you are aware then definitely you can do anything you can do new thing you can do research so dr sahani was also very much aware we all go through the literature of homeopathy we all have gone through the principle of uh, homeopathy like the organ of medicine we all gone through the dynamism of homeopathy but only dr b sahani why he thought because he was aware what he is reading what he is doing he was aware of that so finally he researched this method transmission of dynamic medicine through the hair or from the distance dr sahani has proved potentiality of uh, further research yes uh, with this system of medicines more the, the opportunity of more researches are there many new potential questions arises for future for research with dr sahani's discovery uh, it helped furtherance of medical science and art yes we used to face the questions no that uh, how it works and uh, how uh, i can claim that uh, our medicine is uh, going transmitted to the patients no so so many questions are there but uh, being a homeopath uh, i can uh, uh, say only that it's a matter of uh, research so uh, i uh, uh, appeal those people those who are working on this uh, dynamic and quantum uh, uh, particles no Uh, they should come forward and uh, try to do the research that how this homeopathic medicine can be transmitted and are getting transmitted so it's a matter of research dr sahani has proved a research in crisis yes uh, it has been uh, told by so many people that the crisis gave a uh, give birth to the research and uh, dr sahani has proved because i know uh, very well uh, the background of dr bandhu sahani and dr uh, mk sahani sir so dr sahani proved crises are the seeds for research i have also visited the uh, village of dr bandhu sahani really it was like that the crises I, i have seen one get ignited to find out new meaning for life and from that particular situations reaching to this particular situation it's very very important it's a, a very I, i can say uh, it's a you no know, very impressive and we should learn from this type of the personality that uh, how to do something new and how to give to the society how to contribute to the society dr sahani has proved transparent purity finds eternality dr sahani got himself imprinted into history it was his uh, transparent and purity of life which get diffused with nature yes dr bandhu sahani has proved guide to show the path to take away the pains teachers are always ready to support their students uh, readiness for sharing information yes uh, just i was hearing our first speaker uh, from the uh, germany and dr yasika dr yasika uh, gave remarks ah uh, no yes i'm i'm just you gave a very good remarks that uh, very few doctors are there who read, uh, who are uh, ready to give the information who are uh, ready to share the uh, their knowledge dr sahani was also like that and uh, what she did the same thing so it's very good thing and these things also i have learned from dr bandhu sahani How, the the way you uh, the, the way you share your knowledge no and uh, you discuss with your students or with the doctors you get more and more knowledge so sharing the knowledge it's very important for the learning and these things i learn from dr b sahani dr bandhu sahani has proved uh, cosmopolitan nature has the very good understanding for the anthropology man a social animal are above caste color or creed widely traveled person dr sahani was cosmopolitan in nature yes uh, i have seen and i have uh, uh, experience his nature also the cosmopolitan nature he has visited so many country european country america and so many places and uh, i have uh, heard so many stories also so he was a very uh, 
uh, affectionate type of the person, very caring type of the person. So, and we have the rubrics when uh, he was getting, you uh, know, uh, some problem and we used to talk about uh, him, you know, that uh, we should try to find out the rubrics, you know, we should try to include the rubrics, care and worry. We have the rubrics in our repertory, elements from care and worry. So whenever uh, we uh, talk about the medicine for Dr. B. Sahani with Dr. M. K. Sahani, so we used to talk about this uh, particular rubrics, care, elements from care and worry and magnetized desire to be. So these two rubrics was very important for Dr. Bandhu Sahani. Dr. Bandhu Sahani never compromised with philosophy of his life. Dr. Sahani proved that one can find his own path with determination, highest purpose of living. A compromise is an agreement whereby, whereby both parties get what neither of them wanted. So, Doctor, uh, what I said that the can find uh, can find his own path with determination. So determination is also very important. If you are determined that what you have to do, then definitely you are going to achieve the things. Doctor Sahani has proved action which is uh, regulated and which is performed without attachment. Doctor Sahani has loved everyone without lust of uh, receiving rewards. He proved he benefited most who serves most. The root of suffering is attachment. Yes, of course. We all know you, how much you are attached, that much you are going to get affected. So when we talk about the grief or uh, mental shock, no, those who are very much associated or emotionally attached, they get more grief. They get more sorrow. So Dr. Sahani was not like that. And because he was contributing, he was ready to give to the society. So there was no lust. And uh, how much oppose he had uh, he had faced when he started working on this uh, transmission method. I had uh, experience and uh, I have uh, heard also uh, when he was going to present the paper in the seminar and all. But in spite of that, all the difficulties, he crossed and proved himself that what I am doing, it's a truth and what I am doing, it's a right thing. Dr. Bandhu Sani has proved hurt of a mother, caring nature, just I was talking about that. The caring nature are like nurturing the universe, a hurt filled with cares and worries connects the universe. Yes, the hurt of a mother is a deep abyss at the bottom of which you will always find forgiveness. Yes, I have remembered. Uh, I used to come to Dr. Sani's clinic, no? And uh, when I go back to my home, uh, while going back, he used, every day, he used to tell me, when you reach there, just give him, a, give, him uh, give me a call that you reach safely. This much caring was there. So that's why I was talking about cares and worries. This was very important for Dr. Sahani, Bandhu Sahani, and I learned this from him only. Dr. Bandhu Sahani has proved setting a message of freedom. Freedom from medicine. Let the doctor take care. More time to serve. Yes, freedom from the medicine. If we are talking about the homeopathy, this homeopathy is also provoked that the freedom from the medicine. If we are talking about one medicine, single medicine, it's just like freedom from the medicine. And Dr. Sahani, if we are talking about Dr. Bandhu Sahani, even single medicine you don't have to take. You will have to talk to the uh, doctors only. You don't have to take the medicine. That's why we used to say that the freedom from the medicine. Dr. Sahani has proved systematic investigations. Research means a systematic investigation designed to develop uh, or establish principle, facts, generalizable knowledge, or any combination of them and includes the development testing and evaluation of research. Know what you don't know. This is very important. Know what you don't know. Yes. What we don't know, we should try to know that. What we know, it's a, not a matter of uh, a very uh, serious thing that uh, we should try to find out what we know. What we don't know, it's a matter try to find out. Dr. Sani proved life is totality. Life wants to live in total alignment with true love, passion, and integrity. The total destruction of falsehood allows 
uh, authentic creative flow to happen the totality of life means the consciousness and awareness yes we have already talked about the awareness and consciousness if you are aware the things happen around you definitely you are going to give a purposeful life if you are not aware it become very difficult for you what you are going to do and what you are living a life so the consciousness and awareness it's a very very important and uh, finally i would like to say uh, just before starting this session uh, i got a mail from dr yesika arora and thanks to dr yesika i gone through your mail and i got a very good uh, quotation over there work hard in silence let success be your noise so exactly dr sahani did the same thing he worked very hard and silently and now i can say this mode of administration the research of dr bandhu sahani become a noise and i think uh, all over the globe people are aware with this uh, invention of dr bandhu sahani so thank you so much uh, giving me this opportunity uh, especially th uh, special thanks to uh, team of uh, homeopathy 360 dr yasika arora and mr manish jain for giving me this opportunity and i'm uh, very much fortunate that i'm talking about dr bandhu sahani uh i am a very uh, what i can say uh, very uh, small uh, you know uh, but uh, i got a opportunity to say about or talk about dr bandhu sahani so thank you so much to all of you and all the participants thank you thank you dr sanjeev for your uh, very emotional and uh, intellectuals both combined together so i said it is that emotional intelligence <laughs> We have invited the speech from Dr. Sahani, and uh, definitely life is a journey, and definitely this is going to be the learning process every time. So now we have come to the con uh, concluding part of this session. Uh, let us see, we have any questions for the Dr. Sukul and Dr. Sanjeev or not in the chat box. cervical pain uh, on the neck is costicum is there uh, it is with uh, vertigo or really conium is there sifilinum is there if it is the night aggravation so it all depends on the x ray is there so it all depends on the situation and um, depending on the symptoms i think these four are quite good so based on the symptoms uh, one can use this out of four Thank you, sir. One more question from Doctor Neetu. Uh, any medicines you want to suggest which could help in the cases of psoriasis? Psoriasis for uh, is the sulphur, staphylococcus, X-ray, Vaselinum, Tuberculinum, Thuja. So they are on the top line. I mean. They can cure. They have the power of cure. So yes, yes. Calcium also, natrium also. Thank you so much, sir. I would request the audience to please type your queries. If you still have any queries uh, from Dr. Sahani sir, Dr. Sanjeev sir, and Dr. Anirban Anirban Sukul sir. Uh, by the time, sir, uh, can we request our chairperson and co-chairperson if they want to comment? Uh, Something, Sani sir. Yeah, I would like to say, Doctor Chairman, sir, is here in the room, and I think Doctor Gitendra ji has left. So, on behalf of Doctor, uh, good afternoon, dear. Good afternoon, Doctor Chairman, sir. You may uh, have your uh, message now. Doctor Chairman, sir, you are audible.
Are you able to listen to me? Sir, your audio is off, Chiramanan sir. Please on your audio and then uh, you can start. Your audio. Uh, yeah, ma'am. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah. So actually, it is a nice time. Actually, it was started at uh, around uh, one o'clock and uh, it is ending uh, four o'clock. Actually, it is a um, nice journey which I take because the first that man explained about that uh, woman that is the what about that. Uh, uh, topic is the hurt of the woman. Actually, it is a nice topic. Actually, being we give the medicine to the woman, first we can educate the males in these aspects. Because we already know about that even though we are very much cautious. But these things are repeated, irrespective of the countries. Actually, like German man told, and also India, it is also like the tone. So, we just we should give the, or we just, just to give the, still the awareness is must be needed because even though the country is developed so so many things because when you uh, when you think the developed countries are there but what is the use to say these are the developed countries when they are heard the females it is my own personal opinion because we can declare that, that the developed countries are there developed we are so much developing arms and everything but when we see that uh, the, these things it is a uh, very much uh, what is called it is a uh, very much a drawback to the males because we already know that we all know all, always born from the uh, yeah, female only but the traumatized woman the topic itself explained it is more, mostly sexually abused but one thing when he when madam narrated that one condition in that condition she told that that uh, female or that lady being that is weakened by or uh, sexual abuse by father and relations these things are happened okay so 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 these things are happened so we can have the homeopathic medicine there is no doubt in it because madam also divided acute case and the chronic case the acute case madam suggests taconite and the opium and the chronic case also uh, ma'am suggests natrum natrum mu so by the medicine only whether we think we can give the relief no it's not at all because animal in his case checking also, he even explained these things. Okay, because some obvious cause is there, we should inquire about that talk. Otherwise, Hanuman told there is a disgraceful character like the phone. So the case checking must be needed. Definitely, we will give the good thing to the all. But the government or the or we are also uh, what we educate to others, but we should educate ourselves in this aspect because all are being a human being. So, all because it is so, we already we can say in one way that it is also due to the hormonal imbalance. No, that is we must educate others before they educate to others, we must educate ourselves. So, only the conditions become cured. Because the madam told that there is a symbiosis trauma, honeymoon, that is the madam used the term word. There is a symbiosis trauma. Actually, it is the relationship between the two different species. So, that uh, and, and another one is their ambience. Okay. So, mixed feelings with the emotions. So, we should get educated. Actually, uh, I am very much thankful to Homi with the 60, 360 for calling that man. Because the she is a nice person to explain all these things. So, next I just explain about the Dr. Uh, Abbon Sukul sir about the biological effect of ultra, ultra low doses known remedy. It is a, because just uh, start, start start with the lower animals. Actually, when compared with the human being, it is my opinion. Uh, don't mistake me. When you compare with the effect of the medicine in our lower animals, it is better than act than the higher animals. That is ourselves. Because the lower animals, we can say, okay, there is no mental alienation is there. Everything is become the normal. That is there because they are having the only five senses. Only we have the sixth sense. So, uh, Sar nicely explained the effect of the medicine in the rat and mice and also he beautifully explained so many cases by a single sheet. Okay, mostly it is not like that one. Mostly when we say a patient has the age like that one and they have the tumor like that one, they, then they spend two or three pages for that one. Okay, Sar nicely doing that one because he nicely explained in one sheet, this is the medicine which I give because he only experiences. Because what we have the experience is not, not at all possible or explain the same thing to others. Okay. 
So here it is a very nice ex explanation for, uh, by the sir. And also when somebody has asked you about the question, sir is automatically explained these are the medicines. Okay, because we even though we are selecting the medicine for the similarity, but we study the, about the therapeutics in the separate subject. No, so nicely it is a very nice time for you for me to uh, associate with you people. And also the last but not least, Sar also explained about the Dr. Sanjeev Kumar sir, because he just turned what are the things Dr. B. Saran. Okay. Even though we are a homeopath, we should follow him. Because that is B. Sagani and M. K. Sagani. Just I learned many things from the M. K. Sagani sir. Because how he has that very passion and also very much uh, what is called very much attractive by others. Okay, because I am in the Tamil Nadu, but in Tamil Nadu all the people are know him. So likewise, all the other states, that is irrespective of what we say, it is irrespective of the state, irrespective of the politics, irrespective of all the things, start, stand first. So uh, yesterday I thought to how it is possible. I think he learned from his father. But we don't know about his father, but I am very much thankful to Dr. Sanjeev Kumar sir for explaining about the term. And also I am very much thankful to Homi with the 360 for arranging this session. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Chiraman. Uh, you are such an affectionate person to us and uh, we have come to the close of this uh, web, uh, today's webinar. This is the announcement for tomorrow, a slight change because uh, Dr. Joel from Philippines who was supposed to be uh, present tomorrow, uh, he is not available so he will be presenting day after tomorrow on 31st and uh, on his place we are putting the 31st two presenters tomorrow, like Dr. Vikram, uh, Gos, uh, Vikram Goswami and Dr. Krishna Murari, they have agreed to deliver their lecture tomorrow itself. So this is slight change for the tomorrow program. And uh, Dr. Joel uh, Abhinas uh, is a wonderful person. I had a talk this morning with him over the messenger and uh, he conveyed his uh, gratefulness to us and Dr. Sukul also because he is a friend of Dr. Sukul uh, and he came, uh, he, he has a very good uh, talk with me with him to, today. So tomorrow we will be, tomorrow we will be listening Dr. Bipin Jan and uh, the contributions uh, further, the research work, Dr. Research actual work we will be discussing on and the clinical evidences from Dr. Swendra Vikram Kuswami and I'm sitting before you all and traveling into the memory lane, down memory, memory lane. I am reminded of my past days living with my father and I still today I feel that he, he is here with us and uh, uh, helping us and with his blessings this conference is going, this webinar is going to be the most uh, satisfac satisfying for moment for me, especially I say me, it is a very satisfying moment for me. And uh, with these words, I only have to express my thanks to you all. Thanks to Mr. Manish Jain, very, very um, polite persons I have met. And uh, the director at the BGN groups of uh, uh, company looking after the books, publications and webinar, constantly working day and night. And uh, Dr. Yashika Aurora, she is also a wonderful lady, I see. And I, I, sometimes I see she is a student, sometimes I say, no, she is a mother for me. Because she is guiding, she is uh, helping and everything she is doing like that. So she has become a good a part of our life and I wish that God bless all of you, all of you, I say all of you to have a more better future along with the homeopathy. What I say about homeopathy that I have lived this year along with the homeopathy and I still I feel I am not complete because and I need one more generation, one more life to be with the homeopathy. So if God permits, if I am born, reborn again, let me born as a homeopath next time also, in the next life also. So with these words, uh, I conclude this session and I request uh, Yashika ji uh, to uh, 
say that <coughs> thank you thank you so much sir thank you for such a nice uh, explanation as well as guiding everybody about tomorrow's webinar also and thank you so much sir for the compliment i am so glad that i i have this privilege to be a part of your family or your uh, life so it it is actually overwhelming uh, for me for being uh, with you as uh, as a guide i would say because uh, i am lucky actually at such, such a small age i am able to uh, i am able to get guidance and every everything from such such big homeopaths who are uh, who are actually um, the an inspiration for all the home, homeopathic fraternity so thank you so much and i want to request sir there is a question from dr utpal if we have time we can discuss we have only 5 minutes i think left but if we can discuss one question i think this is for you only for the hair transmission thing uh, female aged 41 years suffering from pre auricular sinus hot patient fear of cancer as her mother died from cancer which i know itching for long time aggravated by hot 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 uh, aggravated by hot and fair complexion what can be uh, like what can be thought uh, as a similimum remedy or how to deal with the case can you please suggest sir dr sanju can you make some suggestions here now yes 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 tell to say that medicine but uh, i can prove that uh, Uh, yeah uh, and, and uh, uh, learn from mk sahani and dr b that uh, we should not uh, suggest the medicine in this type of the uh, situations no but rubrics i can suggest uh, there uh, uh, we can go for uh, some of it i have uh, already tried uh, of cancer is there and the family history cancer is there there and uh, uh, फॉर वन से so there is some connectivity issue i think on your right so there so your voice is cracked ha he left there was some connectivity issue i request dr utpal to wait a second i think sir will join us back and then he'll answer uh, by the time uh, i request you to please uh, 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 please uh, put the queries in the chat box if still there any queries left so uh, uh, sani sir you want to say something before we wind up the session uh, now that it is my uh, session is complete uh, there are a lot of the things to share but uh, definitely we will be uh, having more session tomorrow so i feel that it is the time to conclude now uh, and uh, come back again tomorrow so all i request all be with us tomorrow and day after tomorrow because it is a uh, it is the greatest uh, opportunity that we are trying to blend everything together everything together this is important for us dr sanjeev will be able to complete that your uh, message now what you want yes. that you will, yes. will it be possible yes. to complete now yes you are right already all i think already completed just a med uh, five rules of suggest or the more simple to medicine is yeah calcarea sir please uh, turn off your video and then speak try to speak once uh, yes. you close your video and then talk sir Dr. Sanjeev, you close your video, yes, and then you can. You may be able to talk. Uh, you uh, uh, now you you speak. Okay. So I think uh, it is time to. Uh, sir, please uh, talk, Sanjeev sir. Uh, putting your video off, you can uh, tell the rubrics. 
Yes, yes, yes. No, I'm not. I'm not. Yes, yes, sir. थोड़ा सा ट्रैक आ रही है वॉइस यू कैन टाइप इन दी चैट बॉक्स फॉर दी द्रू ब्रेक्स इट्स ऑल राइट एंड आई रिक्वेस्ट दी ऑडियंस टू प्लीज कम ज्वाइन एस टू मोरो एट वन ओ क्लॉक अगेन विद न्यू स्पीकर so thank you so much thank you anirban sukul sir and thank you chera manan sir for being with us today i want to thank uh, dr jitendra sir and dr kennar ma'am also for being with us today and guiding the audience so well thank you all of you uh, i and i want to thank audience also for your patient listening and being with us uh, since 1 pm thank you all so uh, can we end uh, yes sir thank you so much thank you the rubrics uh, dr utpal we, uh, you can mail us and uh, we'll be able to answer i think uh, dr sanjeev will also put in the chat box by the time thank you so much everyone